Am I the a-hole for refusing to buy my stepdaughter a car like my daughter's? I, female 38, have a 16-year-old daughter. About seven years ago, her dad and I divorced because he found out he was gay. Him being the only breadwinner and a high earner at that, and me being a housewife, he preferred to let us live in our house, a big one in a gated community, and continued paying all our expenses and giving me spending money to maintain my lifestyle. Two years later, I met my current husband. A year later, we married and he moved in with me and my daughter. Him and my ex are great friends, especially since my ex is still very much part of our lives. Also, as a wedding gift, he gave me his half of the house, and now I own it in full. My husband has a daughter with his ex. They have shared custody and she lives with us half the time. The problem is that my ex pays for our daughter to go to a really expensive private school, buys her expensive gifts, and for her birthday, he bought her a $60,000 car, and my husband can't afford the same for his daughter. My daughter and her stepsister do not have the best relationship, mainly because my husband's ex hoped that they would be getting back together and keeps poisoning her daughter. My daughter used to share her stuff until her stepsister started ruining them on purpose. That was when my husband made a rule that they can't borrow from each other. I stay out of it since she refuses to see me as a parent and I won't force her. My husband has a good job, but nothing as close as to what my ex earns. And since we both decided that the house is enough help for my ex, our income is just what he earns, which in my opinion is more than enough. Now my stepdaughter's 16th birthday is coming up. She asked for the same car that my ex gave my daughter. We refused, of course, and said we would buy her a car that fits our budget. She threw a tantrum and threatened my husband that she would never talk with him again if he didn't get her the same car. He is wavering, but I refuse. $60,000 plus dollars is just under what he makes a year. It will drown us in debt, and we are still paying off his student loans and some medical debt he has. But on the other hand, he loves his daughter a lot, and I feel partly responsible since she wouldn't have asked for it if my daughter didn't get the car for her birthday. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your ex bought your daughter the car, right? So tell your stepdaughter that her mother can buy her a car to make it equal. This is the best answer to this, honestly. I love answers like that, that do like an uno reverse on the people. I would warn Opie, though, to be careful of stepsister keying slash damaging her daughter's car, or even trying to take it for a joyride slash steal the keys if she knows where Opie's daughter keeps them, in retaliation or jealousy. Opie should talk to her husband about what to do if this happens, and to check with insurance to see if it would be covered. I would also talk to X about the concern of this, considering he bought it and it was a gift to their daughter. Maybe all three could come up with a game plan on what would happen in that scenario. This is a real possibility if the ex is poisoning Opie's stepdaughter her, and the stepdaughter was already destroying her daughter's stuff to begin with. Also, Opie has to be real clear with her husband. While he wants his daughter to be happy, she wants her daughter and her belongings to be safe, and that if she damages the car, she cannot stay with them. Her daughter, as a repeated victim, would come first. It would be just like how he would put his daughter first if the situation was reversed. It would suck for him, understandably, but it isn't healthy for Opie's daughter to be in this situation. And if Opie's daughter goes to live with her dad, which isn't fair to Opie or daughter as it was originally her and her parents' house, the stepdaughter's hate will turn towards Opie and mess with her. Not day home. Like you said, you can't afford it, and that is enough reason to not buy it. If she continues, tell her in the spirit of fairness, her mom should be the one getting it for her since your daughter got it from the parent that is not part of your relationship. This, life isn't always fair. Stepsister would have had a privilege of using said things if she hadn't been a brat and purposely ruined them. So logically, her mom can buy it. Seeing as it didn't come from Opie's household, hers shouldn't either. Not day home. It is way out of your budget. The fact that you guys are offering to buy her a car at all is more than a lot of teenagers get. Is it unfair that your daughter has a $60,000 car while your stepdaughter won't? I mean, I can see how it seems that way from a teenager's perspective. But your daughter received that gift from her father, not from you or your new husband. It would be one thing if you and hubby decided to buy your daughter a car, but not your stepdaughter. But she can't demand a gift from you that your daughter got from someone else. Next story. 
Am I the a-hole for making my grandmother give me her house after my stepbrother thought he'd get it and had already renovated it? I've been mostly estranged from my father since I was 15, and I've only ever maintained a relationship with my grandmother. The estrangement was due to my mom, him, and me. I won't blame him entirely. When I was 23, I found out that my father had given my grandmother's home to my stepbrother. My father had given it under the assumption that my grandmother would give it to him once she passed away, which she'd promised to do several times. My brother was older, married, and had a child and apparently needed a home. I have nothing against him as a person, but I was feeling bitter about it, and basically griped to my grandmother how my father had sidelined me again. After I vented, I made myself forget about the house. My grandmother passed away earlier this year, and to everyone's surprise, had given the house to me instead. It was obviously a very awkward situation. It was made even more awkward when I found out that my stepbrother and his wife had completely got renovated most of the house by putting in nearly 90,000 of their own money. My father called me and begged me to let him buy the house for around $150,000, so my stepbrother wouldn't have to pay for his mistake. Here is where I think I'm the a-hole. Honestly, I don't think I'll ever be able to own a house otherwise. So I told my father I will be keeping the house, but I gave notice to my stepbrother to move out. I've since moved into the house, and while I'm slightly guilty about enjoying a renovated house that I didn't pay for, I can't help but think this whole mess would have been avoided if my father had waited to receive the house before giving it away. I've since had a conversation with my father about why my grandmother might have done what she did because of me venting to her, and he's upset. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Grandma made a choice. They were foolish to funnel money into something they never owned. Your dad can give him 90000 to make up for it. Congratulations on your new home. Get security cameras. Just because you want something doesn't make it yours. Your dad assumed it did. You didn't. You were allowed to vent. You were allowed to be hurt. And your grandmother obviously agreed with you. There's no background detail here, but your stepbrother was her step too. And if older, presumably not in her life as a child, not day hall at all. Agreed, not day hall. I hope he mentions venting to grandma, without expectations. Perhaps grandma appreciated spending time with Opie, who genuinely enjoyed her company, rather than because they anticipated a posthumous payday. Perhaps grandma felt better leaving a gift to someone she actually felt loved by. Maybe stepbrother or dad did something to spoil the relationship behind the scenes that we don't know about. Either way, stepbrother jumped the gun with the renovations, and dad is to blame, and should be on the hook financially, for promising more than he could provide. If dad doesn't return the 90000 and Opie actually enjoys the renos, I'd personally consult a lawyer about how to gift some of that renovation cost back to stepbrother, without opening myself up to lawsuits, since that would go a long way towards the down payment. I'm sure Grandma was watching those renovations and felt a little resentful that someone felt like they could just take what was hers without asking. Act like they owned it, all while treating someone who really loved her like garbage. She did this on purpose. Not day home. Your dad can take the $150,000 he offered you and reimburse his son. Step son. Which makes Opie even more of not day hall since their father was trying to snub his own biological child. That's a big nope on a step versus biological kid part. I'm a step kid, my stepdad is just my dad. All the important dad stuff, my stepdad did. Took me to braces appointments, listened to my terrible clarinet playing, gave me a hug when boys and girls rejected me. Step versus biological parent is a case by case situation, and using biology as a determining factor isn't always a great idea. That being said, no, he shouldn't have given his son a house that wasn't his to give. Not stay home. They were foolish to invest so much in a house they didn't own. If you've been estranged since you were 15, I would argue you do more help as you've not had a parental support he had. You were a child at 15, and he could have made more effort. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my ex-husband he doesn't need to meet the kids, half-sibling? My 37 female ex-husband, 43, and I split seven years ago after his affair partner reached out to me and told me she was expecting a child with him. He tried to work things out with me, but I was over the marriage and over him. We went our separate ways, worked out custody, and I've done my best to move on. 
I met my current husband shortly after the divorce, but waited until the kids were more adjusted to the situation before introducing them. I remarried four years ago, and have just recently had my daughter. The kids, eight female, ten male, are super excited about their new sister, and I guess they brought excitement to their dad's house. We alternate weeks, as he's now asking questions about their new half-sister. He said that since she's going to be a part of the kids' lives, he should at least be allowed to meet her. This makes literally no sense to me, because she's not related to this man even in the slightest, and she'll have pretty much nothing to do with him at all besides maybe being at mutual family events. I told him he was way out of bounds, and that I wouldn't be obliging this stupid and strange request. Since this point, the kids, I assume he put it in their heads, ask when the baby can meet their dad, and I've explained as kindly as possible that it probably won't happen and they've been bumped out since. My former mother-in-law and father-in-law are saying that I'm being extremely petty and that they'd love to meet the baby too, and that I need to move past things and be more accepting of the dynamic. I'm baffled and feel like I'm in a twilight zone. My husband said it's up to me and that as long as there's clear-cut boundaries, he'll accept what I choose, but I feel like this is pretty open and shut. I feel crazy though because other people in my situation have allowed this to happen, and I'm just wondering if I'm actually wrong here. Info, I have never officially met as a fair baby, nor do I plan to. He lives full-time with his mother and only sees his half-siblings maybe once or twice a year if even that. And no, this is not my choice as I don't stake claim over when they meet or how. I'm aware he'll meet her at some point. I just don't see a point in an adult, who's nearly a stranger, meeting her before she can even remember him. She'll never have any reason to meet him besides a few times a year, and she won't really comprehend who he is until she's two or three. His affair partner and him are not together. She believes once a cheater, always a cheater. Her and I agree on this at least. I do not have to like him to co-parent. I don't care to meet him for coffee, go to his family reunions. He has asked me to attend with the kids that I told him pound sound. My reasons being that he is manipulative, and in the past, he has used events where we're all together to try and play house with me. As stated before, I've taken the not my circus, not my monkeys approach. I have no direct reason to involve myself, and I frankly don't want to. Now for the comments. Not stay home. It would be weird if you actively prevent your ex from meeting your youngest when you happen to be in the same place. Example, at one of the elder's kids' graduation ceremonies or birthday parties. But there is no reason he specifically needs to be introduced to your youngest. This. There's no reason at all the ex-husband or any of his family needs to meet the new baby. They're not at all her family, and never will be. Yes, if you're at a mutual event like a graduation for one of the shared children, fine. He can come say hello. But he has no good reason to be involved with her at all. He has his own third kid with the affair, assuming she kept the baby. He can stay away from yours. It sucks for your two shared children, but at 8 and 10, if it's just explained that they have their dad, who's different than their sister, and their time with their dad is just for them, that's enough. He'll get over the disappointment. It seems like it would maybe make sense if the kid was older to meet these people before a big family event. But I cannot figure out why they need to meet a baby who has zero clue who anyone is. Not stay home. He's still trying to involve himself in your life beyond what is necessary and appropriate. Good on you for nipping that in the bud. Continue to be firm about your boundaries. There is absolutely no need for him to meet your daughter. Especially with the way your marriage ended. Not stay home. Screw these people. That's your baby and people need to understand boundaries. He's your Rex for a reason. Stand your ground, mama. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom that she doesn't deserve the title of grandmother? My wife Kate and I got married about a year ago. It was a small ceremony with very few people in attendance. None of my family members, except my brother, were invited. Kate has a five-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. When we first started, Kate, my family, but especially my mom, would make derogatory comments about how I shouldn't be with a single mother. My mom would say things like, you shouldn't be raising another man's child, or Kate is only using you for free child support. Those comments were extremely hurtful, and I made a decision to distance myself from most of them. Around Christmas time last year, my brother and his two young children died unexpectedly. The incident devastated my entire family, and we are all still processing this loss. Because of their death, I have begun to see my family more. 
To celebrate my late nephew's birthday, Kate invited my sister-in-law for a nice dinner. My sister-in-law, without our knowledge, brought my mom along. Kate, though surprised, didn't say anything to my sister-in-law or my mom. At first, the dinner was going well. Everyone was nice, the conversation was light and fun. At one point, my daughter woke up, and my wife and I knew that she wouldn't go back to sleep knowing her aunt was in the house, so we let her stay up with us. We let her watch some TV and play with her toys, and she was paying no attention to the grown-ups. My mom decides to pick my daughter to try and play with her. She starts crying and thrashing around, but my mom refuses to let go, muttering stuff about how she'll get over it. Kate essentially had to force my daughter out of my mother's hands in order to calm her down in a different room. Once everything was sorted, Kate came back out with my daughter and my mom started yelling at her about how she was turning her granddaughter away from her grandmother and how she was poisoning her mind. I obviously got upset with her and told her that maybe it's because she doesn't deserve the title of grandmother. This only added fuel to the fire. My mom stormed out, taking my sister-in-law with her. She later sent me a lengthy message about how I shouldn't have said that considering recent events, the death of her two grandchildren. Now I feel extremely guilty. Not day home. Firstly, if this is Kate's daughter from the previous relationship, your mom has no right to use her as a surrogate after the loss, and her previous comments. Also, this is a living being, not a plush toy. Sorry for your loss, Opie. Granddaughter-grandmother relationships can happen without being related by blood, but Opie's mother can't just demand something like this, especially considering her abusive behavior. My husband's stepmom is an amazing grandmother to my kids. She is grandma. His bio mom lives far away and my mom refused to meet them when she was alive, her choice. She chose her ex-husband over me and knew he wasn't allowed near me or my kids, and if he showed up, he'd have went missing. If my mom popped back up trying to be grandma, I'd laugh and kick her out. If she was alive, zombie grandma would definitely be kicked out. Some people aren't made to be grandparents, and blood definitely doesn't mean anything. Not day home. I'm sorry for your loss. Your mom doesn't get to exclude your child, and then suddenly decide she's accepting of her because she wants to replace her biological grandchildren. That's awful. Not day home. She didn't want to be a grandmother. You took that away. Fair enough. Just that circumstances have changed doesn't mean you and the kid changed too. Also, the lack of consent grabbing is not cool. She's a major a-haul for that. You don't force a kid to get over it for your... Not sure what it even is. Ego? Satisfaction? Self-importance? 